This entitled mum can only speak Chinese and wants her three-year-old son to be an English-speaking prodigy. But when he starts failing at school, she begins to reveal her wrath. Happy birthday, today's your birthday and on with the revamped show. So just a bit of information. I work at a well-known trampoline park in the UK. We have a large area of trampolines, a section for climbing walls, and a soft play area for the little ones. My job role is a party host, so parents can book for an hour and a half party. They pay a certain amount for a certain amount of children to attend and get a party room for food and cake afterwards. I basically help ease the stress from the parents, so I spend the hours with the kids either jumping, climbing, or playing in the soft play. Then I take them for food whilst the parents sit there in the cafe. They also have the option to join us in the party room. So, around the start of the year, I was put in for a party shift like normal got everything ready in the room, and got ready to meet the party and introduce myself. Originally on the booking it had said that there were going to be 10 children for a 6 year old's party, one of the easy ones. The party was supposed to arrive 30 minutes before they are due to start jumping, so they can be given wristbands, coloured bibs, jumping socks, and a safety talk, so they get the full hour. The party parents turned up 10 minutes before they were supposed to start. I had gathered 10 bibs, 10 wristbands, and 10 pairs of socks. There were about 9 kids already there, so I got them ready, checking their waivers so we can have contact details and medical details in case of injury. I approached the mother of the birthday party and asked if it was okay to leave the last wristband with her and for her to wait at reception for the last party member to turn up, so the children that were ready here would get their full hour and wouldn't be late. What do you mean wait for one more? There's about 20 kids that we're waiting for. 20? I'm sorry, we only have 10 down to jump on your booking. Unless it's booked under another name, maybe? No, you idiot. I paid a lot of money. I paid deposit for 10 and paid the rest for the other 20. Okay, if you only paid 10 deposit on 10, then you'd have to have only paid for 10 to jump. It doesn't take deposit then take payment for a load more. It's likely you only just paid for the 10. There were only 10 waivers linked up to this booking, so there's the proof she only paid for 10. Let me speak to your manager. She stormed up to the reception desk while I went into the office to get my manager. She came and explained the exact same thing. The woman would just not accept that she had only paid for 10 kids. Even our booking system tells us how much payment was taken and it was the right amount for only 10 people. Another thing you should know, as soon as the party number reaches higher than 20, you have to have two party hosts for safety because of the ratios. So if one of the kids went down and I had to do first aid there, there would be another person to keep watch of the others. However, I was the only party host in and available that day. They had also only ordered enough food for 10, so there wouldn't have been enough food. After a lot of swearing from the mum, my manager told me to wristband all 30 kids with a different colour wristband and just get them jumping whilst she dealt with the parents. Obviously, it was hectic trying to watch 30 kids by myself as well as making sure they all knew where the drinks were. Luckily, my manager and another member of staff sorted the room out and the food order, so I didn't have to worry about that. Eventually, the hour finished and it was time for the food. I got all the kids into the room and sat down where they started eating. Normally, I pour drinks. Now, here's what sort of ticked me off a bit. There were about 15 parents, all stood around the room, watching me struggle pouring juice for the kids. I accidentally ended up spilling a little bit of orange on a kid. I immediately apologized and grabbed some tissue so he could wipe it up. I heard a voice from one of the parents. Don't spill it again, you silly little girl. Bearing in mind I'm 19 and not a child. They can see me struggling and accidents happen. I pretended I didn't hear it and just carried on. Shortly after that, the birthday child's dad came into the room and saw what his son was eating. Is this chicken? My son is a vegetarian. How dare you give this to him? Did you force him to eat this? He got right up in my face, which was kind of funny, as I was the same height as him. Now each party room has CCTV in it, so my manager could definitely see it. I didn't make him eat it, no. I told everyone it was chicken nuggets. There's cheese, pizza, chips, garlic bread and crisps. I never once told him he had to eat anything. I shrugged. The kids then decided to try and throw leftover nuggets in the jugs of squash. 
Guys, can you stop throwing food in the jugs? I won't fill them up again if you keep doing it. The kids laughed at me and kept doing it. Don't you dare shout at the kids. We paid for this room so they can do what they want. Where's your manager? You're clearly incapable of doing anything right. You're useless. Not even prepared for a party at all. You should be ashamed. I almost lost it. I took a deep breath. I'm sorry you feel that way. I'll go get my manager. I closed the door to the room that was open and walked to the office. As soon as I opened that office door, I burst into tears and my manager came running over. What's happened? What's going on? I can't do it. They're throwing food. The dad's shouted at me for no reason, saying I'm useless and incapable of doing anything. I can't do it anymore. She sat me down at her desk and another manager sat with me while her and the park, park is what we call the trampoline area, park manager, a big guy with muscles, went and sorted them out. Basically, they had all finished the food whilst I was gone. My manager didn't even let them sing happy birthday or cut the cake. She straight up gave the kids all their shoes back, took the bibs off them, and asked them to leave. Luckily, all the kids' parents were pretty much there anyway, so they all eventually left whilst my manager and the park manager cleaned the room. I felt so bad leaving them to clean, but I was so annoyed, ticked off and low-key hyperventilating that I just didn't want to risk having another breakdown or panic attack. Shortly after I sat down with my manager and the managers of the company watching back the CCTV footage and basically answering questions and discussing about what happened. I'm so sorry if I did something wrong. I tried to keep my cool and not let it affect me, but I just couldn't handle it. So I came and got the manager. Right from the second they got in the door, they were horrible. I was told that I did the right thing by getting my manager involved and I wasn't in any trouble. How they couldn't imagine getting rid of me because I'm the most reliable and available member of staff they have, not to toot my own horn. So at least I didn't lose my job. But that day, I so nearly walked out and never came back. My manager took me out for dinner after the shift and it cheered me up a lot. Oh, and the parents refused to pay any more money than what they did. So they basically had 20 kids jump free, but they are no longer allowed in the building because they were also rude to the cafe staff. So I guess I won that one. Now I've never had a job like that, but I can imagine it being absolutely terrifying. I mean, having to deal with 10 kids would be hard enough. Then hearing that, oh, that number's going to be tripled and you have no assistance. I would have went to the manager straight away and was like, look, you gotta bring someone else in here to help me because if not, I'm walking right now. Hey, uh, last week I started a job as a teacher. Perfect ground for finding entitled parents. Here's some background to start off with. I teach English to children, and while the school accepts children between 18 months and 12 years, my students are between the ages of 2 and 5. The school I work at only teaches English and has different levels based on your child's ability, where the teacher can use discretion to decide if the child can go faster or needs to slow down. Because of the virus, the school also has mostly one-on-one -on -one lessons now, but because things are getting better where I am, the school also allows physical classes instead of online only classes. I have this kid, we'll call him D. He's a three year old boy with a local Chinese father and mother who is traditionally Chinese. Where I live, English is the primary language of most people, though the command of English is a little skewed with plenty of slang. D's father could speak in Mandarin to his wife and REM. EM, however, could not speak any English at all and was Mandarin speaking only. This is where problem number one is. While I am local Chinese, I only grew up with English speaking parents and grandparents, which meant that I have almost no command of Mandarin, even though I studied it as a second language for 12 years. Once I was out of school, my brain wrung out any knowledge of Mandarin like water out of a sponge. I can speak it at a barely conversational level, but can't explain anything in depth. The second lesson D came for was also my first day working there. While I was briefed on EM, as she had been the one to sign D up for lessons, I was informed by my coworker that D's father would be the one dropping him off and picking him up. 
This was good news for me, because when we let the child go at the end of the lesson, we take a few minutes to go through with the parents or guardians on what the child learned, what they did well, and what they can improve on. Along with any recommendations for them like speeding up or slowing down, it's hard for me to explain any of that in Mandarin. So if Dee's father was the one coming to pick him up, then talking to him was simple. Unfortunately for me, that was absolutely not the case. On Dee's first lesson with me, EM was the one to drop him off. He's only three years old, so we were doing a foundation class with him, where we basically teach him one letter per hour long class. How to say and write it, what sounds the letter makes, and some simple words that start with said letter. Given that it was his first time seeing me, he was almost entirely unresponsive to anything I said. He kept trying to go out and find EM would want me to open the door, and when I wouldn't, because he couldn't just be running off, he'd try to shove his fingers in the gap of the door. He would not repeat after me or mimic my actions, and overall did not manage to learn much. I did manage to get him to say the four words that started with the letter B, but that was about all we managed to do in that hour. For all my Southeast Asian people out there, you know how our parents can be. You also know how traditional Chinese parents are even worse. And EM was just horrid. When I'd let D out to go back to EM, she was at first cordial, asking how he did in the class and what he learned. I explained to her that because this was D's first lesson with me, he wasn't as responsive, but that he did manage to say the four B words taught to him. Now, during classes, we have four flashcards with the words they're supposed to learn, and we give these cards to the parents to keep in case they want to revise with their child at home. I prefer to give the cards to the kids to hold, to reinforce that it's their responsibility to keep the cards safe. Plus it helps them develop their motor skills when they have to hold stuff. When I gave D his flashcards, EM snatched it out of his hands and immediately pointed to the first one, Bubbles, demanding loudly for him to say the word. Since D was no longer in an environment where it was just me and him, he clammed up and wouldn't say anything. EM saw that as my failure. Cue our first terrible conversation. You already know who EM and D are, and me is, well I don't need to explain that. This conversation was in Mandarin, with me speaking in broken Mandarin. As a side note, I can understand Mandarin but can't speak it. Another side note, parents aren't allowed to be in the classroom during lesson time. What does this card say? D says nothing. EM jabbing her finger into the card. What does it say? When D doesn't respond, I get a death glare from EM. Why doesn't he know how to say it? What do I pay you for? Ma'am, since this was his first lesson with me, I think he was shy and we didn't manage to get far in the material today. I assure you that what do I pay you for? I sent him here so he could learn English. EM glares at D and demands that he say bubbles again. But D is entirely clammed up and just shakes his head. Look ma'am, I need you to understand that this was his first time seeing me. And he's three years old. He was able to copy what I said during class and point out the pictures associated with the words. Then why can't he say it? D, tell me what this card says. Possibly because we're no longer in a quiet environment where it's just him with a teacher. He should warm up to me soon within the next class or two and become more receptive to the lessons. I'm sorry if the class today wasn't up to your standards, but please understand it is his first time with me. EM snorts at my comment, grabs D and stalks off. I share some words with my co-workers, mostly us complaining about EM and my mentor confirming that she was just like that during D's very first lesson at the school with her. That concluded my first time meeting EM. But oh no, we're not quite done. Now it's time for today's lesson. She was even more horrible this time. She showed up 10 minutes late, thankfully with Dee's father too, and released Dee into my care. Today, I taught him the letter C, including the words car, cat, cow, and crab. He was a lot more receptive now that I figured out that he was more into physical actions and was able to say all four words, plus match the words to the pictures. The class itself was fun, but releasing him to his parents was not. Since Dee's dad was around, I spoke to him almost exclusively. I explained to him that Dee was doing well and became a lot more receptive to me in my lessons, but struggled with his penmanship since he couldn't get a good grip on a crayon and had a very light touch. 
so his movements were shaky. I also explained that he struggled to say car sometimes, since he mixed up how it sounded with cow. But Dee's dad was very understanding. I recommended he guide Dee in how to properly hold a pencil at home. And Dee's dad relayed all of this in Mandarin to EM. EM looked ticked at me when Dee's dad mentioned to her my comments about Dee not being able to hold a crayon properly, but said nothing. The school also gives the child the activity book to bring home, and Dee's book today had a page with a car drawing you cut out. My coworker had cut out the entire page, so she could cut out the car itself with ease, and the car was coloured in by Dee. EM only noticed the bit of the page that was still in the book and blew her fuse. Where is this page? How can you give him such a terrible book? Huh? Where is the page? Why did you give my son something so terribly made? Ma'am, that page was cut out because there's a paper car cutout we needed to use. Here, the car is right here. I flipped the book over to the front page where Dee's messily coloured car cutout was tucked between the cover and the first page. EM's rage subsided a little, but she gave me the nastiest death glare. Oh, so we can't even colour it properly. Hmph. I wonder why I'm even paying you when you can't teach Dee how to colour a picture. Let me say, Teaching children how to hold a pencil is not my job, it is the parent's duty. And if they only expect him to practice for an hour every Saturday, that's their problem. Sounds nasty, but it's true. At this point, I'm exclusively speaking to Dee's dad and barely even looking at EM. EM has also gone back to jabbing her finger at the flashcards, demanding that Dee say what the words are. EM shaking the car flashcard in Dee's face. Say it, say what your word is. D is visibly stressed, clutching his toy car and staring at EM, but saying nothing. I decide to intervene, me pointing at D's toy car in his hands. D, do you know what that is? D immediately flashes me a big grin. Ka! I clap for him and give him a high five, offering EM a smile that only makes her scowl deeper. Pretty sure her muzzle lines and crow's feet are permanent now. I also noticed that anytime EM talks, Dee's dad looks at her with such tiredness in his eyes, like he's regretting his marriage now. I finish explaining to Dee's dad on my recommendations for him to practice his penmanship at home. He thanks me, while EM grabs Dee's wrist and yanks him off, stalking off like she's some femme fatale. The school admin apologises to me for even convincing EM to sign D up, saying he knew she's going to be trouble from the sign up process. I just say it's fine, pack up and leave. Now three hours later, I'm sitting here writing this, thinking if EM keeps her trash behaviour up, she's going to grow up with a son that hates her. I can't believe I have to see EM every Saturday now. I hope she pulls D out, even though I love him dearly. EM is just going to keep making trouble every single week, and find some reason to throw a crap storm. Now, I can't be the judge on what the mum's intentions are here. I'm sure if she doesn't understand English very well, it's probably really important to her for her child to understand English. But the kid is three years old. There isn't too much he's going to learn in a one hour lesson. It's going to take time and patience, and most importantly, it's gonna have to happen at the home as well. And the fact that the teacher could convince the kid to say the word on the card, but the mum couldn't, really shows you what's actually going on in the situation. Submit your story to be read on the channel at voiceyhearstories at gmail.com and join our Voicey Veteran community at r slash voiceyhear. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode. Alright Voicey Veterans, I'll see you in the next one.